The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I'm on the Ocean Alexander 72 Pilot House. I'm going to take it out for a full sea trial. We'll start with a look at the crew quarters and the engine room. The entry door is at the transom. Entering, we first come to the crew accommodations. Just inside the door, the head is to the left, shower to the right. Continuing ahead, we have a sink recessed into a granite counter, and then a single berth with storage. Opposite is storage for fenders, lines, etc. Straight ahead and we come to the engine room. There's nearly six feet of standing headroom. Here we're looking at a pair of 1150 horsepower CAT C18s mounted to massive stainless steel engine beds and dampened mounts. At the forward end are large sea strainers. Fuel filters are on the forward bulkhead. The dual generators are at the aft bulkhead with workbenches just above. Each has dual fuel filters mounted to the front. Here's an important aspect, shock absorbing mounts on the exhaust risers. First time ever seeing something like that. Everything is clearly labeled and laid out in an orderly fashion. As we head back out, we'd like to see a grab handle at the doorway. Back on deck, look at this beefy stainless steel hardware. Recessed rollers are just outside of this heavy duty bollard. Thick boarding gates are to both sides. As we make our way to the bow, we have wide side decks to both sides. Fuel fills are to the side. 14-inch cleats blend seamlessly into the 35-inch high elongated rails. The deck combing comes up 13 inches. Beefy hardware continues here. The foredeck remains flush with a hatch covering the anchor windlass. All stainless steel hardware is used and the anchor runs through the stem. Foot switches are to the left. To the sides are access hatches to the road locker and notice the thoughtful touch of adding steps to the mold. That's another first that we've seen. House batteries are located in the middle of the three stateroom, so there's little degradation of current since there's such a short cable run. Just alongside, I can see the reverse osmosis water maker and there's also the hydraulic bow thruster in this compartment. Now what I haven't shown you on this boat is a power panel showing the ship's electrical system. All of it is controlled right here at the helm with the octoplex system. As for the top sides, finished in Alex steel marine grade epoxy paint and buffed to a high gloss. Now let's see where we'll be operating from. The helm is mounted over to the right hand side of the pilot house with the four stateroom version. With the three stateroom version, it's moved to the center. Nice layout, we can clearly see that there's some Evan Marshall design qualities here with the pod housing the two 19 inch displays and these are touchscreen displays. Down below, two panels have all of the electronics laid flat so we have a good view of the electrical readouts. To the starboard side, the engine controls and the bow and stern thrusters which are both hydraulically controlled. Now of course the seat is completely adjustable and it has flip down armrests and here's a feature we're seeing more and more of and I like it. Controls for the electronics on the armrest. Now just to the side is a watertight door. This gives the helmsman a full view of the side of the boat when docking. Now I would like to see these controls move to this position here so that I can still maneuver the boat while having a clear view up and down the entire length. Plus it would also allow me to have an easier reach of the controls from the helm seat. So not only do we have the convenience of maneuverability with a starboard side door next to the helm, to the opposite side there's another watertight door. And here's a convenient feature, both have bug screens for ventilation while we're underway. Now the flying bridge helm is easily accessible from this pilot house deck because there are two flying bridge access points, one in the aft deck, one right here at the pilot house. The hatch is glass enclosed and there are three latches. I would really like to see them all interconnected. Now with the flying bridge helm, two helm seats give us another set of eyes looking forward. Again, the Evan Marshall designed helm with a pod style holding the dual 19 inch touchscreen displays and the rest of the electronics flat mounted. The flying bridge seats are from STID, fully adjustable with flip up armrests, flip down footrests, even have a recline feature and notice custom embroidery. Now let's get underway. As an example of how maneuverable the 72 is, we pulled out from what was probably the tightest area of any test to date. Let's take a look.
Now that we're free to navigate, let's go over the numbers. With the CAT C18's turning 40-inch diameter by 38.5 pitch Hung Shen Nibral propellers, we reached a top speed of 22.7 knots at 2350 RPM. At that speed, we were burning a combined 118 gallons per hour, giving us a range of 260 nautical miles. Best cruise is basically subjective to how far the boat needs to run. In displacement mode, put the throttle back to 1250 RPM and it produces a speed of 11.5 knots in a range of 778 nautical miles. At the CAT recommended cruise setting of 80% load, we were running at 2180 RPMs and 21 knots. That speed set the fuel burn at 98 gallons per hour giving us a range of 289 nautical miles. She handles well with excellent stability. Her heavy weight helps her to remain relatively flat during turns and she clearly has large rudders as there's excellent control authority even at low speeds. With only mild chop we really can't comment on how she would handle in significant sea conditions but the conditions that we did have still told the story of a boat that remains remarkably stable regardless of the directions the seas were coming from. But as this boat targets the owner-operator, her hailing around the dock is more significant. Let's take another look as we put her back where we found her. Her 12-inch 25-horsepower bow thruster and 10-inch 15-horsepower stern thruster offered minimal controllability in no-wind conditions. The best use of them is to plan ahead, thrust early, and hold the power on for an extended period. With this in mind, we were able to control her quite efficiently and had her sliding into position with what needed to be surgical precision. Well, Ocean Alexander caters to the owner-operator, and from this operator's perspective, the close quarters maneuvering that you just saw was done with no operational orientation. And that's my full sea trial of the Ocean Alexander 72 Pilot House. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.